In his short but celebrated career, Jacques Tati is widely regarded as a comedic genius, a perfectionist whose artistically daring films looked like nothing else. His influence is huge, from Paul Thomas Anderson, Roy Anderson, Rowan Atkinson, Blake Edwards, Tsai Ming Liang, and many others have paid homage to Tati's style in their own work. The French auteur made just six films that includes the masterpiece, Playtime. A panorama of utopic Paris gone awry, with its massive sets and enormous cast, Playtime is one of the most unique, if not exceptional, achievements in all of cinema. Tati's comedies are endeared by aficionados to critics alike, with this unmistakable style that transcends borders, cultures, and languages. Tati depicts ordinary people, mainly nameless characters who scatter about like ants, trying and failing in a modern world that is both alien and familiar. I want to proclaim the survival of the individual in a world that is more and more dehumanized, Tati says. The more officialdom and the more decorum there is about an organization, the funnier it is. An important aspect of Tati's style is its visual and aesthetic power, from compositional balance to symmetry, to how Tati directs our attention. Every shot displays an impeccable sense of detail and artistry that is uncannily beautiful, albeit in a philosophical way. Consider the symmetrical balance here, the equal weight on equal sides of the frame, and a fulcrum or axis at the center. This symmetrical balance shows a sense of formality, austerity, rigidity. Tati uses it here to convey something cold, utilitarian, yet at the same time gives the pleasing impression of visual harmony. When the reflection is a perfect mirror image, the symmetry is said to be pure or perfect. But more common are compositions with slight variations or imperfections. This is called near symmetry. Symmetry and beauty are often linked, generally by mathematicians, scientists, philosophers, and art historians. There is an attractiveness to symmetry because of how predictable it is. And as people, we generally want structure and order to help us make sense of the world. But in playtime, Tati suggests perhaps that over-reliance of this leads to dehumanizing effects. In contrast, asymmetrical balance results from unequal visual weight on each side of the frame. Asymmetrical balance provides a greater sense of dynamism, movement, and energy, as well as visual variety. Tati is a mise-en-scene director. This means that he conveys information not by cutting or montage, but from how elements are arranged within a single frame. Tati's camera is often locked down, so compositions like this express energy, despite the static framing. Radial balance occurs when elements radiate from a common center. Mosaic balance results from balanced chaos. As Tati's films progress, things tend to become more chaotic, suggesting that even perfect machines and structures eventually break and fail. Another type of symmetry is known as translational symmetry, sometimes called crystallographic symmetry, which occurs when elements are repeated in a series or pattern. This type of symmetry conveys rhythm, motion, and speed. Tati uses this strategy to show us the modern world in constant motion. In his book, Art and Visual Perception, theorist and perceptual psychologist Rudolf Arnheim proposes the idea of the structural skeleton, an invisible network that exists in all composition. Arnheim suggests that the structural skeleton automatically draws our eye to certain parts of the frame, where the center and the four corners of a rectangular frame act like magnets to the eye and with the center being the strongest magnetic force. Ah, 
Arnheim's structural skeleton is not the only theory to suggest where the eye naturally moves. In the Gutenberg diagram, the eye is said to sweep from the top left to the bottom right, passing through Arnheim's optical center. Less attention is paid to the other corners, which are called fallow areas. Since the eye moves to the right as it moves down, the top right corner is a strong fallow area, while the bottom left corner is mostly ignored. There are also the F and Z patterns from design theory. Whether we see in an F pattern or Z pattern or neither, our natural scanning abilities come into effect when we see shots like this, where Tati refuses to direct us where to look. Tati's films also demonstrate the playful use of movement and rhythm. Regular rhythm occurs when the intervals between elements are predictable, or of similar size and length. In Tati's world, this strategy implies the humdrum routines of life. Progressive rhythm occurs when the sequence of forms and shapes is shown through progressive steps. Some characteristics of elements might have stepped changes, such as sound effects. Playtime is a great study in Gestalt psychology, which theorizes our ability to perceive entire patterns and configurations rather than just individual components. In other words, the human brain attempts to simplify and organize complex images or designs that consist of many elements by subconsciously arranging the parts into an organized system that creates a whole, rather than just a series of disparate elements. Our brains are built to see structure and patterns in order for us to understand what's going on. As a Gestalt theorist himself, Arnheim states that a good image can only be one that informs us about the observed thing. One has to understand perception and artistic expression is a dynamic relationship, and that the dynamic between the forces and the elements is what conveys the expression. All said, in the humble opinion of this video essayist, the most beautiful quality in Tati's work is its human element. The gentle way he invites us to laugh, not just at him, but at ourselves as people. We have the ability to build great things, yet we can't help but to let them conquer us. With that, legendary film critic Jonathan Rosenbaum sums it up rather elegantly. Tati directs us to look around at the world we live in, then at each other, and to see how funny that relationship is and how many brilliant possibilities we still have in a shopping mall world that perpetually suggests otherwise. To look and see that there are many possibilities and that the play between them, activated by the dance of our gaze, can become a kind of comic ballet, one that we both observe and perform.